Hey, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores, and I'm coming with the floating head. Of course, I had to get a Georgia Bulldog on screen when we're doing a preview. I mean, you already know how that go. But today, we're coming with a big-time Washington Commanders versus Browns injury update for this preseason week one game for the 2023 season. Of course, as you can see in the title, tight end Logan Thomas and kind of starting left guard-ish interior offense alignment, offense alignment in general, if you want to call them that. Sadiq Charles is also out both of those guys they're being extra cautious with those guys because i feel like if there were like a, a regular season game that really mattered we needed to win i'm pretty sure logan thomas will play sadiq charles i mean it's a matter of whether or not he's even the starting left guard at this point anyway but um both of those guys' injuries are not that bad so we got to dive into all of that and also who's going to get starting snaps and minutes in place of those guys who's going to be the starting tight end or at the very least tight end one going into this game against the browns and who's going to be a starting left guard also how long do the starters plan on playing from so far with information we've had from the coaches and things like that because things could change but we have like a decent range of information of how long the starters may play against the browns but before we dive into all of that make sure you stiff arm that like button stiff arm the subscription button and stiff arm the bell next to that subscription button so you get a notification each and every time i release an informative and opinionated video just like this one make sure you stay tuned because i will be live streaming this game against the browns tonight so make sure you pull up the game starts at 7 30 i'm starting the live stream at 7 so definitely make sure you pull up for that i'm really excited to just have football back in general but i'm also really excited to watch my burgundy and gold go out there even though this game doesn't matter man sam howe his kind of real first debut honestly um eric Bieniemy's debut for the washington commanders i mean so many things have changed this is gonna be our first burgundy and gold football that's not under dan snyder so this is gonna be a lot of fun it's a preseason game but it's still really big for commanders fans it's bigger for commanders fans than it is browns fans they wouldn't understand what we've been going through but yeah man let's go ahead and dive into this video let's get it you tell your family you're gonna be a commander All right, so like I already said, you see it in the title, you see it in the thumbnail, and I also mentioned it in the intro. Tight end Logan Thomas will be out versus the Browns, along with guard Sadiq Charles, who was technically fighting for the starting left guard position. If you look on the depth chart, he's the starting left guard, literally. But um, I feel like Chris Paul, for reasons I've already stated in several videos and live streams, Chris Paul should just go ahead and take over. First of all, just reason number one, Sadiq Charles, do you depend on him to stay healthy? And if you just feel like, like I do, that he's it's just inevitable for him to end up getting hurt anyway why not go ahead and start chris paul now rather than later if sadiq charles is going to end up getting hurt by say like week three week five week eight whatever it is you might as well just go ahead and start chris paul now so that when you have to throw chris paul in there mid-season he will look flustered a little bit the, the chemistry with charles leno to his left and nick gates to his right won't be as strong as if you just go ahead and name him the starter now let's just go ahead and move forward with chris paul as the starter and we just work on that through training camp we get the chemistry down they're working on how they're gonna adjust the stunts and twists and pick up potential blitzers and things like that they're already working on all of the nuanced chemistry things where you got to trust the guy to your left and your right all of that we could be ironing out those wrinkles and fixing a lot of those errors and mental issues now in training camp rather than trying to figure it out on the fly during regular season games where it matters whether we win or lose. Go ahead and start them now, preseason training camp, get that out the way. That's one reason, Sadiq Charles always being hurt. Do you depend on him to even stay healthy? Second of all, if we're talking about talent, Chris Paul, if anything, has a higher ceiling. Now, Sadiq Charles versus Chris Paul coming out of their drafts, their respective drafts, Chris Paul, obviously didn't have the floor of a Sadiq Charles. Sadiq Charles was the starting left tackle on arguably the most explosive offense in college football history. The talent is obviously there. I'm not saying Sadiq Charles isn't talented. I love Sadiq Charles' talent. It's just, can he stay healthy? Can he put it all together? My thing is, Chris Paul, first of all, we've seen him actually start an entire game, look good an entire game against the Cowboys. So now we're even arguing, I mean, at the NFL level, 
does Chris Paul bring you a higher floor than Sadiq Charles when it comes to the NFL? Coming out of college, I would have told you Sadiq Charles had the higher floor. I mean, Chris Paul was a seventh round pick for a reason. But then on top of all of that, Chris Paul, I feel like, also has the higher ceiling. Um, I mean, if you just go look at the RAS scores, Chris Paul has an elite nine point something RAS score. He's a freak athlete at the guard position. Really strong, really mobile, really athletic. He can pull and get to the second level versus linebackers and DBs and block them really well, which is going to help a lot immensely in the screen game and stuff like that or you know when we're trying to really run the ball we want to pull a left guard over to the right side of the offensive line he can do that swiftly without tripping over himself and stuff like that so I'm just ready to go ahead and just move on um the talent is comparable um so it's it's almost even but if anything I'm starting to side towards Chris Paul at this point and then on top of that Chris Paul even though I mean you know, we, we could talk about health, but he's only had one real opportunity to show how healthy he can be in a starting game against the Cowboys, but he stayed healthy that entire game. And then he's been healthy all training camp, whereas Sadiq Charles just always has this random nagging injury. So I think it's just time to go ahead and move on to Chris Paul period, especially like if Chris Paul goes out there and balls out against the Browns and he looks like a starting level left guard, I think it's just time to move on. Don't look back. Sadiq Charles. And then on top of all of that, Chris Paul, I could see him playing left guard, maybe right guard Sadiq Charles they see him as a positional flex guy that can play tackle guard whatever you need him to on both sides of the ball so he makes a better backup than Chris Paul anyway Chris Paul seems like the better starter and now and on top of that Sadiq Charles seems like the better backup who can play more positions than a Chris Paul if there's an injury um but sadly Sadiq Charles is the one that's usually hurt anyway but either way for all the reasons I've already stated it's just time to go ahead and move on Chris Paul is just starting left guard let's keep it pushing let's stop even debating about this and arguing about this and even thinking about it Ron Rivera and Eric Benjamin just go ahead and move on man he showed you what he can do in the Cowboys game last year he looked like I mean he I, I don't of all like the young rookie or like just young guys that didn't get a lot of opportunities until that week 18 game against the Cowboys last year you could argue Chris Paul was probably the most impressive between like Lee Hudson who showed out when he finally got his opportunity Percy Butler showed out when he got his opportunity obviously Sam Howell showed out when he got his opportunity but if we're talking about who had like the best game the most consistent game from snap one to the final snap of the game you could argue Chris Paul technically was the most impressive against the Cowboys you can argue it Sam Howell of course had more flashes Khalid cuts and had more flashes just by the nature of their positions but Chris Paul was really good against the Cowboys last year and his only start in his NFL career so far so of course you got to take that into account um, but at the same time, Sadiq Charles, I mean, how many games has he started? I don't even think it's really worth looking up to give you a real accurate answer, to be completely honest. And then moving on, of course, with the starting tight end position, Logan Thomas, since he'll be out, um, again, they're being overly cautious. So don't worry about Logan Thomas. This is not a repeat of last year, 2022, where he was coming from, like returning from a really bad injury. He never felt like 100% of himself. He's felt like 100% of himself so far in the offseason. He just has a minor issue right now and they're being overly cautious again like I said in the intro I feel like if we had to play a game today like like if this preseason game were a real regular season game and we needed to win Logan Thomas would be out there but it's like it's preseason and let them sit it's not even worth a, a little injury becoming a big injury type of thing so we already know what Logan Thomas can do we already know he's one of Sam Howell's favorite targets what do we necessarily have to prove out there if anything Logan Thomas being out there would help Sam Howell more than it would help Logan Thomas Logan Thomas is good to go I'm not worried about him like being rusty by the time we play the Cardinals week one or anything like that so Logan Thomas you're good but in his place that means John Bates and Cole Turner will get more snaps with the ones and stuff like that I expect to see Cole Turner get some targets I expect to see John Bates out there blocking for run plays and things like that and maybe a bit mix of both for both I mean Cole Turner has improved as a blocker and um, he's really just a glorified big receiver at the end of the day and any improvement in blocking is a big help but at the end of the day man he's just a big receiving target that Sam Howell has already shown trust in as well Cole Turner's having another one of those training camps just like he did last year where he looks like oh man he might be a steal out of the fifth round um, but I'm gonna need to see that translate the preseason games and then translate the re regular season games and he'll definitely get his opportunity with Logan Thomas out Cole Turner's gonna be primarily out of the tight end group he's gonna be targeted the most John Bates may get the most snaps over 
overall because he's going to be involved in the run game and he may even get some targets in the passing game and then of course when logan thomas is hurt that moves john bates and cole turner technically up to like starter level especially if you're running like 12 personnel or anything like that and then that means the guys that are all the way on the right side of the depth chart all the way on the back end curtis hodges and brandon Dillon. that means they'll move up and start to get more snaps with the second stringers and third stringers which means they'll just in general all four of those tight ends instead of splitting the snaps amongst five tight ends is only four so everybody's going to get more snaps and opportunities to show what they can do and i'm really excited about curtis hodges because i mean being six foot eight that speaks for itself in the receiving game but i've been hearing and seeing that he's been an improving as a blocker as well um even more than a culture Tur again cole turner is really just a glorified big receiver at tight end um so he's improved as a blocker but i wouldn't say it's been a, like a real significant amount but to like consider him a dual threat tight end just yet same thing with john bates a really good blocking tight end but i'm not sure if he's a dual threat tight end as far as the receiving game goes i mean he'll catch it if you throw it to him and at the end of the day when it comes to tight ends only a handful of guys get open on their own it's really up to the offensive coordinator to get tight ends open that's just how even george kittle I always bring this up george kittle is a phenomenal tight end top three top two tight end you could argue the best tight end in football but he's schemed open by kyle shanahan that boy George Kittle is now here just shaking people out of their socks. Um, so at the end of the day, John Bates is not George Kittle. I'm not saying that at all. But at the end of the day, it's on the offensive coordinator to get him open anyway. So you can kind of consider John Bates a dual threat tight end by tight end standards. Um, but he's not a guy you just expect to go out there, get open by himself, and then make a play. And then you definitely don't expect him to get any yards after catch. But Curtis Hodges, on the other hand, I mean, I'm not expecting much after the catch. But I consider him to have a higher ceiling receiving-wise than John Bates. And he already seems like he's a better blocker than Cole Turner. So out of the guys that are available outside of Logan Thomas because he's hurt right now, Curtis Hodges gives you the best optimism of being a, a dual threat tight end. I mean, of course, I can't wait for my boy Armani Rogers to come back, but that's not even worth discussing because he's on IR. I'm not expecting to see him until 2024. Um, but and then yeah man that's that's really it as far as like some of the notable players that will not be out there i mean of course that means that if their names were omitted that means they're going to be out there so guys like curtis samuel who we're always worried about he's good to go i mean sam howell i mean he's your starting quarterback he's going to go out there and start thank goodness for that and then even defensively like kendall fuller takes some veteran days off some people were worried about him being hurt he's good to go jamin davis i know he's dealing with all of his legal stuff they didn't say anything about him so i'm assuming Ho him and cody barton are your starting the linebackers Khalid Hudson's gonna be heavily rotated in because i feel like he's good enough to start if we need him to but I'm, i love the fact that we have a nice solid three linebacker group um to where Khalid Hudson is technically coming in, in rotation um and then everybody else just sounds like they're good to go no benjamin st juice injury worries Emmanuel forbes 100 we didn't hear his name mentioned or nothing like that so any name that wasn't mentioned just assume that they're pretty much as good as they can be health wise and we're ready to go and get things going now on top of all of that it's being reported that the starters will play the first quarter unless they have one or two really good series so basically they're going to play the first quarter basically max no matter how things go they're pretty much just only going to play the first quarter especially the offense um i, I expect the defense if anything to play less um, then the offense the offense is the one that needs to build chemistry again new starting quarterback pretty much an entirely new offensive line except for Charles Leno at left tackle because even Samuel Cosme is moving from right tackle to right guard full time and then new offensive coordinator whole new offense new play calling new scheme new play design new game plan everything um, so they need to go out there and really work on their craft so again the starters will play the first quarter unless they have one to two really good series so that means like if we go out there open and drive and Sam Howell's just clicking all cylinders he's dotting up the defense the Browns defense and everything the offensive line looks good against a really good Browns defensive line not as good as the commanders because again I feel like the commanders have the best defensive line in football but don't sleep on the Browns defensive line you can't forget Miles Garrett and those guys but if the offensive line looks good against them and the offense just looks good Eric Bieniemy's in a play calling rhythm um the, the the receivers look explosive the tight ends are doing their thing running backs doing their thing they look warmed up they got some momentum going if they we just go out there on the first drive and score a touchdown and make it look easy that may be it don't expect them to play an entire quarter so like it's being reported if the offense looks good it may only be one or two drives that's it um but 
it's quite likely that if they don't look good, they'll just play one quarter max. And then we're on to the backups from the second quarter all the way through the fourth throughout the rest of the game. So just to give you that heads up on what you should expect. And then lastly, before we get up out of here, I don't know what Fred Smoot got going on, but I did want to announce it's being reported by TMZ that he was arrested in Virginia yesterday. Smoot was taken into custody at Loudoun County Adult Detention Center at 1058 a.m., which is like, how do you get arrested that early? Like, what are you doing? He remained behind bars smoot was booked misdemeanor failure to comply with support obligation i don't even know what that means i'm not gonna say and act like i do but that's really interesting because he's one of the main like media members for the commanders as far as like coverage and stuff like that when they're doing practice on the radio games and stuff like that so i'm really interested in seeing how that turns out um i hope for the best for him though because i really like his personality i love how he talks trash i love the country accent another country guy up there um supporting the commanders and, and, and you know being one of the faces for the commanders especially media wise so i support fred smooth but boy you got to figure out what you got going on um but man oh also before we get up out of here if you're interested after the outro it's just a random little 50 second clip of the commanders boarding the plane going to the cleveland getting ready for the preseason game and stuff like that if you're interested stick around after the outro for that but yeah man that's the end of this video please get in the comment section let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video please leave a like on this video if you like to do learning thing as always man i appreciate all the support man shout out to all of my sponsors especially my pro bowl sponsor names you scrolling the screen right now stiff arm that like button stiff arm that subscription button stiff arm the bell next to that subscription button and make sure you pull up to the live stream tonight again game starts at 7 30 i'm I'm gonna start streaming at seven i'm gonna do play-by-play -play analysis breaking everything down you're gonna laugh you're gonna learn everything you know how my streams go it's not just super serious analytical we're gonna be laughing and getting off topic and all times of stuff it's, it's preseason, but i'm also gonna do my best to kind of point out a lot of the little things especially when the backups come in and we're starting to notice like okay this guy's showing out this guy's looking impressive and stuff like that so make sure you pull up for that and again stay tuned after the outro if you're interested in that washington commanders clip i am out Happy birthday, Curtis. 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 Happy bir